what was the reason um, why JBL kind of attacked you in that Raw Battle Royal for the one night only? Thing? Oh, the uh, you saw me one night you stand. Did, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've, ta I've talked about how certain things were a fortunate situation. It sucks for everybody involved, but you know, uh, my first go around in WWE from '98 to 2000, you know, uh, for whatever reason, just JBL didn't like me. You know, when he was when he was Bradshaw with the accolades, and I. Uh, I have all these theories in the world of why maybe he didn't like me or whatever. You know, there's there was an incident where my first weekend in, into WWE, uh, I debuted in in uh, Philly, and then we were going to do a shot in Baltimore, and then back when they did one live raw and taped another raw, so I did Sunday Night Heat, and then I did the live raw, and then we were going to go up to I believe either New Haven or Hartford, Connecticut for the taped Raw that would air the next week. So I was, you know, being an indie wrestler and this travel for ECW, I was just going to wrestle Philly, wrestle Baltimore, and then just drive straight up Connecticut from Baltimore. It's a couple of hours, right? You know, Earl Hubner goes, no, stupid, we fly you now. <laughs> so, uh, okay, cool. I turned in my rental car. And uh, he gave me my flight information. I go to the airport, I check in. I look at my ticket. Huh, seat 1A. It's, it's up front, right? That's close to the front of the plane, right? Huh? And I get to the airplane, I get on the airplane, I realize, holy shit, they gave me a first class seat, which I wasn't expecting, but the booking had been so last second. I mean, they booked my ticket either the day before or day of to fly from Baltimore to, to, to Connecticut. I didn't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> and the moment I knew I was in trouble, I sit my, I picture this, first class, first row of seating, uh, Blue Meanie, big boss man, across the aisle, Shawn Michaels, all right? One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> You know, so I'm sitting there and guys are coming on the plane and they're like looking at me. I'm like, oh. you know, they're like, you know, looking at me like sh shocked that I'm sitting in, in first class. But I, the moment I knew I was in trouble, McFoley goes, oh, meanie, no. <laughs> what, Mick, what? Oh, no, meanie, oh. And I was like, he's like, you know, this look of concern. I was like, take me with you, Mick. Take me with you. Put me in your bag. Let me hide, you know. So the flight's going on, and you know, I'm just feeling it. You know, my face is red, my tongue is getting fat. Like my, yeah, I'm just like, oh no. I just want if like, if there was a window next to me, I would sort of open it and done the nasty plunge out. Like, ah, see you later. And from the back, you hear you hear a voice boom out. Why the fuck is the blue mini in first class? And I just wanted to shrink and die. I was like, oh my god! So I get off the plane, go to baggage claim. Baggage claim. Everybody's giving me the eye. Everybody's like, Mark Henry. Mark Henry goes, you fucked up, man. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. And then somebody else you know, finally went, hey man. If that happens again, next time get up and offer your seat to a vet. Shit, why, why couldn't somebody tell me that before I went and sat in first class? Because uh, I had never really flown ECW. I'm driving everywhere, you know. You would drive from New Jersey. You would drive from New Jersey to New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm not used to flying, so I get on my first booked wrestling flight, and it happens to be in first class. So I don't know if that rubs a few people the wrong way. Because when we got to the TV, uh, we got to TV, and uh, I, I, I'm pleading my case in the car. It's me, Al Snow, Mick Foley, and Bob Holly. I was like, dude, did I, did I, how bad is it? Did I really fuck up? Is somebody going to shit my bag? Please don't let anybody shit my bag. And Bob Holly's like, I don't think people shit bags anymore. I was like, oh, thank you. Well, thank God for that. I was like, I, I truly didn't know, you know, and pleading my case, you know. And then we get the TV, and then uh, I get summoned to a room, and it's uh, Jerry Briscoe and Jack Lanza. They go, look, we understand you're new. 
this was a mistake. It won't happen again. I was like, absolutely. And Bob Holly was with me, and Bob Holly is awesome. He stood up. He said, "You know what? He didn't know." There's a mistake, and he, he was just saying to the car how sorry he was and stuff like that. And uh, but I don't know if that lingered on into the reason why maybe me John didn't like me or John had beef with me or whatever. Yeah, that's why I, I kind of hate talking about the story again because I don't want to bring up old, open up old wounds because. Eventually, when he, the, the one night stand thing happened, uh, unfortunately, it's just what you remembered for best. Yeah, I think it's just because it's a rare thing in that time frame for that to happen yeah. on such a, an event with the, a lot of viewers. So you, 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 that hasn't happened since, to my knowledge, in the WWE. Right, and and the, the weird thing is, it, it happened, right, and uh, uh, the the. The, like the is, your guard was down, right? You yeah. didn't have any. I had no idea it was coming, uh, except for the fact that I saw him staring at. Like uh, we're doing a stare off, and uh, we had practiced this too. WWE guys, ECW guys here. Hey, you! I'll kick your butt. All this stuff, and uh, I think I yelled at JBL. Ah, I'll knock that cowboy hat off or whatever. Something, uh, something goofy. You know, we had something we had practiced, and. Uh, I look over and he's kind of like looking at me. I'm like, oh, oh, oh shit. But before the whole fracas broke out, like the bad, you know, these seven guys of it, there was a guy, uh, one of the Basham brothers, bald head kid. I was like, hey man, we're never gonna probably have this chance again. Let's get pair off, you know, go back and forth, you know, punch, 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 punch. So I, I, I'm, you know, the fracas breaks out. I'm looking for uh, one of the Basham brothers. And two nights early before, Jeremy Borash had had his version of an ECW reunion with uh, the Hardcore Homecoming at the ECW Arena. And I got split open that night, hard way, back in my head by Sandman. I, it was either a ladder or a chair. So, so much time has gone by, I, I forget which, I'd have to watch it. So I go to the hospital, I get like eight staples right there. One night stand, the fracas breaks out. And John finds me, and I, while I'm paired off with somebody else, he punches me right where I got my staples two nights before. I don't know if he knew or whatever, but just by happen there, by shit luck, hit me around there. And you watch me go, holy shit, turn around. And uh, sure, you put my shirt over my face and started throwing live rounds. So I was like, fuck, you know, like a hockey fight. Well, I ain't gonna take that. So I try to snatch a headlock, and you know, if you're gonna fight somebody, try to bring them as close so their punches don't have as much range. So I bring them in, and I'm trying to throw live rounds. So somehow we got separated, and um, I get so much blood in my eyes. People don't realize when you get blood in your eyes, everything starts looking like a kaleidoscope, like a like it's like a weird kaleidoscope effect. I'm trying to clear my eyes out, and you know, guys are coming up to me like fucking Ben Wog walks up, and goes. Some people thought I bleed. It's like I know, no him. And he went off with somebody. Trace Smothers good. Trace Smothers came on. I was like, fucking JBL. I'm telling you, everybody's coming up to him. I'm like, hey, you just shot on me. And if you watch the tape, Sandman goes over with the Singapore King, grabs him, and Tracy Smothers went, you know, goes up to him and you know gives him a couple live rounds, and Bubba pulls him out. So we get back to the the gorilla position, which is right behind the curtain. Vince is there and a bunch of people. Johnny Ace comes up to me and goes, who said you could blade? I went, I was like, I, I was like, he shot on me. And I get right there, I gave him the uh, the cliff notes of, he's never liked me, blah, blah, blah. Since my first time, blah, 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 he never liked me. And, uh, you know, uh, he's like, well, he apologized. Sorry, this, unacceptable stuff like that and I also it, it, it just occurred to me while I'm talking uh, when it had been released by WWE in 2000 I had done an interview with I believe either Mike Johnson or uh, Buck Woodward for uh, One Wrestling I said I enjoyed my time in WWE I said Bradshaw is a bully that's all I said and you know how the wrestling business is when one person says something 
it's like that game in, in school where you whisper something in somebody's ear, he turns around, whispers it in him, and by the time it gets around the room, it's morphed into something different. So I probably said JBL or Bradshaw was a bully, and by the time it left my mouth, went through somebody else's ears and mouth, and got back to him, probably morphed into something that was totally not what I said. Because when I got back to the gorilla position, JBL comes up and goes, you were talking about me on the internet. I was like, I'm so in shock. I'm trying to think what the fuck did I say? And uh, I was like, dude, what the fuck? This is a work. This business is a work. You know, we're not. You know, I, was, I, I was totally shocked and, and stunned that that had happened because, you know, I, I, I call it, the, the thing that sucks is, you know, I, after it happened, I went on. I kind of wrote a couple, you know, blogs about it. You know, what I was going through and how I thought it sucked. And some of the wrestlers actually kind of turned on me going, oh, well, you never worked stiff before? I was like, it's not working stiff. If I, Somebody shot on me, you know. I put my face out there. If you're hitting me full force, you know. Stiff, you're not intending to injure the person. Right. You're going you're gonna to feel it like a football tackle or something. Right. You're not trying to put the guy in the hospital. Right. But then there's also, there's a, the, a, the, this side of wrestling that was like, oh, Blue Meanie's a pussy, he can't work stiff. But then there's this also faction, oh, Blue Meanie should probably sue the WWE and become a millionaire, which I still hear to this day. Like, uh, I was at a show, an indie show, and I put my stuff at the merch table, and uh, Mrs. Meanie was watching my stuff, and uh, this wrestler who doesn't deserve to be named start talking shit about me right in front of her as if like she wasn't gonna blue me a fucking idiot he should suit wwe he should suit wwf you know he'd be a fucking millionaire now and not working these indies i was like oh like you <laughs> asshole you're working the indies too and by the way you know i was like oh great so the guy comes back and i was like oh yeah i just got my royalty check from wwe the other day it's kind of cool you know cause, like kind of let him know i fucking knew he was fucking talking shit about me so i was like Fuck you, buddy. Get the crooked finger. Uh, but it was probably one of the most trying times of my life. Uh, you know, I grew up severe asthmatic. I was in the hospital my whole childhood in the oxygen tent. That sucked, but to have something happen so publicly, you know, and you're forever known about it, uh, sucks. But, you know, uh, they brought me out for uh, SmackDown. July 4th, 2005, a couple months right after that. And uh, we went in the room and we talked about it. And, uh, you know, I, I show up to SmackDown. And Johnny Ace goes, yeah, you're wrestling JBL tonight. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, you're going to do the moonsault, pin him one, two, three. I was like, does John know this? <laughs> yeah, he's on board. I was like, oh, man, I'm, I thought I was being set up. You know, I thought I thought this whole thing was a fucking sub. They flew me out to California for this whole thing. And John comes up and goes, you want to talk? I was like, sure. So we're start. if you've ever been to WWE TV, you see signage everywhere. Catering, seamstress, you know, Vince's office. So I go, yeah, I want to, let's talk. So we're walking off and we're walking to a part of the building where you're seeing fewer and fewer signs. And I'm like, oh man, where are we going? You know, it's like if we walk into a room and there's plastic floor, uh, plastic on the floor, I know it's a mob hit. I'm running, you know. But we go in and we go. Me and John went in the room and, we, and he was like, he, he shuts the door behind him. I'm standing there like this. He goes, we could talk or we could fight. I was like, well, obviously I don't want to fucking fight you, John. And the thing is, the, 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 the thing that also sucks is I was a fan of his, you know. Uh, before I went to WWE, I was a fan of him. I loved the fucking cowboy thing he did and all that stuff. You know, he reminded me of Stan Hansen, and I remember for him from Global Wrestling. I always dug his, his his deal, and then for that to happen, I, I said to him, "I was like, hey man, this sucks. I was a fan of yours, and then this you did this, 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 and that." And I explained everything, and he, you know, to he said, "You know what? I I don't remember any of that, but you know, I'm sorry." And he apologized. And he talks about, he said, you know, I loved ECW. I loved the whole ECW thing. That's why, you know, I pitched to have guys like Axel and Balls come up here. He, he you know, told me how he pitched to have uh, Balls Mahoney and Axel are out and come in and have some Sam and some of the ECW guys come in and be used. And, you know, 
I like DCW. I, and I was, you know, I was like, look, it's like we could get, you know, let's, you know, we can go and make some money off this. I was like, all right, you know, fuck. And uh, we went and had the match, and uh, and then we did the deal with the you know, Batista did a run in because they were having a feud, and then it prolonged their feud, and it, it is also a chance to you know reunite with the BWO because I came in with the BWO and a lot of people don't know prior to this whole JBL incident Nova Mike Bucci who had, had been in talent relations was pitching for me to come back because they were having Stevie go from Velocity to Smackdown Smackdown's colors were blue and white BWO's blue and white he's like I don't think Meany would object to coming back for a couple months just to do this thing and if it turns into something cool if it doesn't oh I made a couple bucks and then my indie value goes up for a couple months so um, but then the JBL thing happened and you know we apologized and then years later I'm, I'm sitting on Twitter and somebody tweets to me are my eyes deceiving me <laughs> because it's J, uh, JBL following the Blue Meanie on Twitter I was like holy shit he's like yeah I love the Blue Meanie I think he's hilarious blah 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 and followed back and then we keep in touch and uh, like I said a couple years ago WWE brought me back brought me and Stevie in to do uh, ECW on release volume 3 with Joey Styles and uh, I said you know hey John I'm doing this ECW DVD Rumbles in town be a perfect way to promote the DVD he's like you know what it's a good idea and JBL went to Road Dog and Michael Hayes and it came down to me and the last second they decided to go with Bubba which awesome for Bubba because you know, he's a fucking legend you know I just found out Bubba and, and Devon are going to the Hall of Fame today which is a no brainer but the whole JBL thing was an ugly incident and people were like oh they you know to this day, people say, oh, maybe I'll be yes, but it's like, come on, man. <laughs> Giving me a break. Well, and there was also the surprise factor and the size difference, muscularity difference. Yeah, I, look, I was never going to be Mr. Olympia in this business.